Multiple charges. When dealing with multiple point charges we find the potential and the field strength at a point by adding the individual effects. Not forgetting that electric field strength is a vector quantity whereas electrical potential is a scalar quantity. Here we have an example to calculate the electric field strength at point X given this diagram where we have a 10 microcoulomb charge at point A which is 30 centimeters from point Y a minus 6 microcoulomb charge at point B also 30 centimeters from Y and point X is 40 centimeters from Y as shown. Well firstly we need to know the distance of X from A and from B. This is going to be the same distance and you'll notice we have 30 centimeters and 40 centimeters so we have a 3-4-5 triangle meaning the hypotenuse will be 50 centimeters and I'll label this angle theta. The electric field strength at X due to charge A is given by this formula and this is the permittivity of free space which is given on your data sheet as 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter and charge A is 10 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs and the distance is 0.5 meters this gives an electric field strength due to charge A of 3.6 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. We can do the same now to find the electric field strength due to charge B using the same formula but now charge B is minus 6 times 10 to the minus 6 coulombs. The separation is again 0.5 meters. This gives a field strength of minus 2.2 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. Charge A will be producing a field away from it in this direction, charge B producing a field towards it in this direction. Now electric field strength being a vector quantity we need to know the magnitude and the direction and the easiest way to do this will be to find the vertical component of the electric field strength so the vertical component of the field strength from charge A in the downwards direction is going to be the sine of angle theta here multiplied by the magnitude we found at this point. So that is the vertical component due to charge A. Likewise the vertical component due to charge B. Now they're going to be acting in the same vertical direction as the field is away from A which is downwards at this point and it is towards B which is downwards at this point. So we add the two together. This gives a vertical component of 4.8 times 10 to the 5 adding these two magnitudes together multiplied by the sine of theta which is the opposite of 30 over the hypotenuse of 50. This gives a vertical component of 2.9 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. Now we can do the same thing to find the horizontal component of the electric field at X. In this case the field from A will be towards the left as that is a positive charge. The field from B will be towards the right as it has a negative charge. Also we need to use the cosine of angle theta now. So this is the component from charge A and we must take away from it the component from charge B. This gives a horizontal component of 1.4 times 10 to the 5 which is the 3.6 minus the 2.2 times the cosine of theta which is the adjacent of 40 centimeters over the hypotenuse of 50 centimeters. This gives a horizontal component at x of 1.1 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. Now we can do a vector diagram with the vertical component being 2.9 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb down, the horizontal component 1.1 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb to the left, so this will be our resultant and I'll label this angle alpha. 
The resultant we can find by Pythagoras which gives a magnitude of 3.1 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb. Tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent which I put here giving alpha at 69.2 degrees. So we can say the electric field strength at x has a magnitude of 3.1 times 10 to the 5 newtons per coulomb at an angle of 69.2 degrees to the horizontal. Calculating the electric field at point Y is much simpler as it's between the two charges so there is no horizontal component from either. So we can say that the electric field at Y is again given by this term but now we can just add together the two components as the charge at A will produce a field acting down the charge at B being negative will also produce a field acting down so the two add together the separation from each of the charges now is 0.3 meters. This gives an electric field strength at Y of 1.6 times 10 to the 6 newtons per coulomb acting downwards. As electrical potential is a scalar quantity it's quite simple to calculate the value at X and at Y. We'll start with X. The formula for electrical potential is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R. And so at X we have the charge at A and the charge at B being negative will take away from this. The separation R for both is 0 0.5 meters. This gives a potential at X of 7.2 times 10 to the 4 volts. At Y we can use the same term but now the separation is 0.3 meters again the negative needs to be taken away from the positive this gives a potential at y of 1.2 times 10 to the 5 volts